you are and what, you, what your role in the film was. Yep. Um, I'm Phil Mitchum. I was the producer, co-director, DOP and editor. Joel Byrne, cage me. No, I was <laughs> You went to drop the sandwich. <laughs> Another convincingly psychotic role. I just keep getting on, I've got a face for it, haven't I really? Face for radio. So it's weird because it's, it's the opposite of how you come over in a normal life. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but you play those parts so well. Yeah, just want to play other yeah. parts. Yeah, it's dialogue it took me a long time on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of dialogue in the face. Yeah. It was actually told the whole story in about 90 seconds of yeah, twitching. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so what's the background for them? Um, well, let's back on the film one. Well, let's start the film, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's very short. It is very short. Um, it's said a lot. Yeah, with the film, uh, I had the idea about the second year of university, so about th almost three years ago now. And uh, the, the idea itself was a lot longer, a lot bigger, a lot more locations, like there's churches and stuff in there and that kind of thing. But um, I gave myself a difficult try, the difficult uh, task of making it in about seven days. That's from fully writing it, from the idea to actually fully, fin um, fully finishing right, filming as well. Uh, and that's mainly due to running into my high school friend, uh, John Dawes, who's an actor down in London. He's in one of, I think like in the top three acting schools of the UK. And um, he's the guy who gets beaten up in the car. And um, yeah, it's kind of got to speak into him and just things blossom and it just happened. And it's just over and then made it done, got it done. So it's, the, the film is it's left very open ended. Yeah. Kind of guessing what, what the Joe character actually is or what he's doing. I mean that's deliberate, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, well, the initial idea was uh, that was the introduction to the film. That was like the first scene, and then it goes on to him kind of trying to come to grips of uh, what he had done, why he had done it, all that type of thing. I mean, the whole film is a kind of guy on the edge. Because um, everything's gone wrong for him, this kind of thing of like losing his job, losing his wife, losing the child, that kind of thing. And everything builds up, and he just like stores it inside of him until that one little thing just like takes him over the edge, and it's the one thing that's the person behind him. But in many ways, what's great about it is that nothing's explained. Exactly, it's, that's it's time and snapshot. Yeah, my um, the idea was to keep it le completely leave it open ended and open um, beginning as well, so people kind of just take from it what they want to, they can fill the gaps in themselves, so to speak. So how did you get Joe involved? Did you, did you know um, him before? Or? Yeah, kind of, I've spoken to him, well, I've never really spoken to him before, but I've seen his work, I knew I was a talented guy, and as soon as I finished writing the script, I sent it everywhere, I started speaking to all the contacts I've got, spoke to John Williams, he read the script, he said that he completely loved it, and got me in contact with Joe, Joe read it, I had a meeting with him the next day, and was on board. Yeah. Yeah, what, when, when he said to own to you, did you like to, to initially thought? Yeah, I mean, I just, I liked the open end in this. The open beginning, I should say, and the open end. And uh, to me, it, it was just spoke to me about consequences of actions. Uh, you know, like when you, you lose your rag or something like that, and then that horrible reveal of the child in the car. There's just seen all that, and, and all the questions, like what happened next, what happens next? And that's what I really liked about it. And, uh, um, and to be honest, to me it seemed a very simple thing to do. But there was a great message behind it. And uh, that's why I got involved. And we just got wet, then, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> that was not a special effect. It just yeah, wasn't yeah. sick that And it really added something to it, didn't it? Um, it was just this monsoon, constant rain, and John in places can't stop. It was just the jogging box and t shirt. I don't know if you get any more. In fact, that's why he's not here tonight, actually. Yeah. He's not here because he knocked his teeth out. That's <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but um, John was a good trip. He pretty much uh, lay in a puddle of water for about, I think it must have been about six, eight hours altogether. So, yeah, hats off to him because he did a good job for him. But he did. So, so you got, you've been working a lot with Joe recently? Or? Uh, I've, I've been doing more uh, writing and directing with it, to be honest, a lot of stage work. And um, it's going to be a busy year this year for the, you know, the Paradise Night series. Quite a lot happening for us this year. There's a new play on the way. We've got a three-week run in the West End with the bench that's coming down there. 
Uh, we've got a mini festival coming up. This is the club jaw moment now. Thanks for that, John. Uh, <laughs> but we're here for I'm milking it, I'm milking it. Um, there's a three day festival by the library coming up in June where we'll be able to see Lucky Forky again. I'm Frank Morgan. Rank will be on for one night. Um, did anybody see Rank? Can anybody in the audience here see Rank? Cool, right. Well, you'll be able to see, um, we're shooting a short film that links directly to events that were going on in the estate on the same night that will be premiered at the same festival. So, uh, so yeah, we, we've got a lot on this year, so it's good. All good. What are your plans after making this? Um, well, I've got a lot of things on at the moment. I'm um, producing a short film which should be filmed this weekend. That's a short film called Cold Carlin, that's with uh, Calibura Cafe. Uh, but apart from that, I'm currently a social producer on the film Hunter, which you've just seen. So I've got the job of trying to come up with that. Um, I've got my next short film, which we're planning to do called Love and Light. It's a very fantasy romance type film, something completely different. Very visual, uh, hot for filming that in the summer. Uh, Chris Bronin, who did Auntie as well, I'm going to be associate producer on his film um, Synthetic Conscience, which is going to be a good little sci fi film. And uh, yeah, it's got a lot of things going on at the moment, so it's good times. It's cool. Is there any questions? To be honest, I, that, it absolutely killed me doing that because that's my little niece. And um, yeah, it sounds harsh, but luckily she was um, being trained to get up a bottle, I, a bottle of milk and all that. So um, we just literally gave her the bottle of milk. And as soon as I started filming, I just took it up her and she started crying like, I'm cute. But uh, yeah, every single time I was, I was probably having been doing that. But well, was she, was she a bit freaked out? There was, there was a big fight going outside the car. She was completely fine, she was just yeah, no, it's not too much. It's not you took the milk that it caused the problem. That's the one, yeah. <laughs> so if you see her in the night covered a few years time, don't take a drink off her. Yeah. <laughs> Is there any more? Yeah, I was saying, uh, love is no making and I'm supposed to be over here sort of into that sort of thing. Mm. And I'm always worried about logistics and like, oh, I want to film a track of life, but that was too difficult, so I'll rewrite the scene. How did you manage to get the cars and take over a roadblock for three? Illegally. <laughs> we actually got the cars. It was like, we started filming about, what was it, about 11 o'clock? Something like that, yeah. Yeah, about 11 o'clock until about 6 in the morning. Did that for two nights. Well, technically, the second night was outside my house. I mean, fixed it all. But, um, yeah, the first night was just, we literally made sure we got the road that was, um, it was pretty much like a dead end. It was like the entrance to an industrial space. It was only one way and one way out. And, we started filming about 11 o'clock, no cops turned up, and the only traffic that came past us were the kind of like midnight workers coming out of the factories and stuff, and about, as soon as it hit, about 12, half 12. Yeah, I mean, I think we're very fortunate from that point of view, but what, what really impressed me about Phil, it's the first time we worked with Phil, is how slick and how fast he moved on the night, he, he knew what he wanted, the conditions were horrendous, I'm sure that was at the top of his mind as well. Um, and I was just really impressed with how professional and quick he got the job done. And I think you've been a bit unfair to yourself, it didn't take that long. He had it done in about four hours. Um, and the following night we went back and he very clever with his filters in front of lights to create the, and the horse pipe went onto the windscreen and all this sort of stuff. Uh, smoke and mirrors guys just destroyed it all for you. But uh, very slick, very quick, and I think I think Phil's got a real future, you know, he, he really knows what he's doing. So yeah, well done. So you said at the key of low budget Phil is get organised. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. About, about 90% of that film's fake. My size is thrown outside my house. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right, well thanks, that's great Phil. Yeah.